Good morning. Good morning to those of you who are here on this relatively cool, blessedly cool Sunday morning in Old Greenwich. And to those of you who are joining us via Zoom, a warning to those who are joining us via Zoom, um, we have a bigger screen now facing the congregation so we can see you. Uh, we're experimenting with how to make you more present with us. And that is a joy for us. And if it's um, uh, interesting for you, I, I suggest investing in combs. Our service begins on the service leaflet or with hymn 277 on this feast of St. Mary the Virgin, sing of Mary, pure and lowly. After a brief introduction, the hymn will begin. service continues on the Book of Common Prayer on page 355, page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer with the opening acclamation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and perfectly act your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taken to yourself the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of your incarnate Son. Grant that we who have been redeemed by his blood may share with her the glory of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the first lesson. Thank <laughs> you. 
A reading from Isaiah chapter 61, beginning at the 10th verse. In those days, it was said, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Psalm appointed for this, this morning is Psalm 34 verses one through nine. We'll read responsibly breaking at the asterisk. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. And delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant. And let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me. And saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him. And he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. A reading from the epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians, chapter 4, beginning at the fourth verse. Brethren, when the time had fully come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So through God, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pray, Lord, give me thy blessing. The Lord be in my heart and upon my lips, that I may really proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Lord be with you. The continuation of the holy gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At that time, Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spoke to our, as he spoke to our forefathers, to Abraham and to his posterity forever. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This time in the midst of these, as the old song has it, lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer, there's this confluence of both exaggeration of things of lesser importance because there's so little going on for the news to report in politics, they call it the silly season because there's nothing to do. So everything that may otherwise go unnoticed becomes of such great importance. In our own lives, we have this depression of activity in some ways, which on the one hand can be if our lives are going really well and on full tilt, a relief. And yet if there's very little in our lives that's going well, can be a great burden or it can be some mixture thereof. In today's gospel, we hear the words of the Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit rejoiceth in God my savior for he hath cast down the mighty from their seats and hath exalted the humble and meek. We hear these words of Mary juxtaposing that which is high being made low, that which was low being made high. This very juxtaposition and reversal of roles that I think we often feel in these dog days of summer. To set it in its context, today's gospel is in the sixth month of the pregnancy of Elizabeth, kinswoman to Mary, mother of John the Baptist. And Mary goes to visit her cousin in her pregnancy. And when she sees Mary, who is herself with child, barely, the Annunciation had happened recently. The babe leaps in Elizabeth's womb and causes Elizabeth to look at Mary pregnant with our Lord and say, blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. In the English speaking world, at least in the post Henrican era, there has been a strange relationship between Anglican Christians and the Virgin Mary. Often I think the precursor to which was an overemphasis of Mary and the life of the church in the pre Henrican days, Mary was the accessible one, where as Jesus was so remote a figure, rarely received in the sacrament, seeming to be the domain of the clergy in some ways, Mary was the one who was the, to use the word of Tony Blair, the people's princess, the one who was accessible, the one who was enshrined in altars all over the place and visible, and so was made manifest in so many visible ways throughout the Christian West, and so was a threat to political power, especially with two, with a woman now on the throne. And so we saw in the Elizabethan era, the iconography of Mary erased from our churches, the iconography of Mary taken on by the head of state. And we see this actually illustrated overtly in some of the Elizabeth films that were made in the last 20 years. It is a fascinating study and not one to be gone into in this sermon. But what it speaks to is this, 
We are all desperately seeking a mother in this world. And we are all desperately seeking a mother in the next. We are all desperately seeking a father in this world and a father in the next, a brother and a sister in this world and a brother and sister in the next. Psychologists can speak to the psychology of it. I will speak to the spirituality of it. In God, the creator, we have the perfect father, the one who creates and does not destroy. In the Virgin Mary, we have a mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, our brother, who is the perfect mother, the one born without spot of original sin, the one who at death was assumed to God's nearer presence, the one we can rely on, the one who can pray for us. In our Lord Jesus Christ, we have a brother, one who was born for us, one who died for us and asks nothing of us except our faith and our lives, but not our lives not to be lived in this world, but our lives lived in the context of him, for him, with him, in him, loving our neighbors as he loves us. It is a heavy burden to those not of faith, but to those of faith. It can be a mantle that is as light as this summer linen chasuble that weighs lightly on the shoulders and reminds us each day of the joy of being brothers with Christ, being a son of Mary, being a son of God the Father. I, as a person not born in the Roman Catholic Church, didn't understand Mary very well as a boy and began to understand her greatly in seminary. And it was at that moment, and if you look along here, the 12th station of the cross, when Jesus, it's not illustrated particularly well here, but when Jesus is on it, he looks down and he's about to die. And I remember the first stations of the cross I went to as a seminarian were at the Church of St. Ignatius of Antioch on 87th Street on the west side. And I remember the words of Jesus being spoken as he is about to die. He looks down at John the Divine and he looks down at Mary and he says, Woman, behold thy son. And he turns to John and says, behold thy mother. And for me, who has during his life struggled with my relationship with my mother, it opened up a spiritual mother that I could have that wasn't dependent on the imperfections of humanity. I offer Mary to you as that mother independent of frail humanity who lives in God's nearer presence, who can pray for us and we with her, who in the words of that wonderful All Saints hymn, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones, leads their praises. That verse which says, oh, higher than the cherubim, more glorious than the seraphim, is referring to Mary. Lead their praises. Alleluia. Alleluia. May we rejoice with her whose soul magnifies the Lord, whose spirit rejoices in God, her Savior, in these dog days of summer, these lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. May we ask Mary's prayers for Diana Thierry, our newfound old friend of the parish, whose 
surgery at Hospital of Special Surgeries is went well, but needs to go back tomorrow under anesthesia to have her new joint massaged under anesthesia. May the skilled doctors and nurses care for her and bring her to real health and healing. May those whom you bring on your hearts today, lift them up in prayer and ask our mother in heaven to pray to our father with our brother that they may be healed of all their distress, even as we pray that we can be healed of ours now and in the life to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Turning to page 358, we continue with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and we acknowledge one baptism. the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, remembering especially Justin, Archbishop Michael, our protector, Ian and Laura, our bishop, and with the wider Anglican communion for the with the wider Episcopal Church in Connecticut for fresh expressions of the church here in this state and diocese, for missional experiments, students preparing to enter schools, colleges, universities, and seminaries, for school, college, and university chaplains, for all campus ministries, for the higher education ministry network. In our own parish, we pray for the vestry and their ministry, for parishioners Joe Carter and Marky Hall, for Aubrey, Courtney, Gerard and Margaret and Hannah and Whitney Lees, for Lucy and Alan McCollum, for Lucy Galasco, for Lita Semerod, who is preparing to go back to Greece, for Anna, Martin, Ollie, Harry Waters, particularly for Harry, who has just gone to his new college and begins his time there. Lord, in your mercy, Guide the people of this land and of all the nations, particularly Joseph, our president, Ned, our governor, Fred, our first selectman, in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, for all suffering with COVID-19 and its aftermath, physically, emotionally, financially, and for those who care for those who are in pain, Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, 
Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation, praying especially for Diana Teary and all those we now name. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, especially those we now name either silently or aloud, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share all your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, hear the prayer of your people and what we have asked faithfully. Grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, by the Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Beloved, greet one another in the name of the Lord. And I uh, turn this camera onto the congregation so that those joining us from home can see who they're worshiping with. And as we try this high tech thing, we even do close ups of, see, so, just so that people in person don't avoid the close up of the DeMille camera here. It's wonderful to see all of you here and to see those of you who are at home. Uh, Immediately following this service in person, we're going to have some cookies and lemonade out on the west porch. And I wanted to uh, acknowledge and thank uh, in this hybrid, I'm going to say post-COVID. I know that's probably not entirely accurate, but I'm a glass three quarters full sort of guy. I'm not going to deny that we still have a problem, but I'm going to work through this problem that we've got. In this post-COVID world, I think we are going to take what's good that we've learned during it. And one of those things is hybrid worship. And we've picked up a digital church member in John Worley of St. Louis, Missouri, who's been here almost every Sunday since Christmas, uh, and who, uh, but hasn't physically set foot in the building. He threatens to in September. Uh, he's with us today. And I wanted to also acknowledge he's actually made a digital pledge. He worked through the vicissitudes of our online uh, banking and actually uh, stuck through it with our treasurer, Jordan Silva, and, and lodged a digital pledge. So welcome, John, uh, physically and financially as a supporter of this parish, even though digitally there you uh, sit on that nice porch in St. Louis. We'll look forward to talking with you afterwards. See, he enjoys coffee during worship, and that's a lot of fun. May we walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
This Holy Eucharist is offered to the glory and praise of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And for all the special intentions which we now offer to God in our hearts or on our lips. For the safe travels of all in our congregation and all in our families at this time. for the swift and efficient completion of our building project so that all of our children might begin their school year as they need to here at the dance school and the nursery school. For Diana Teary, as she continues to heal from surgery. The Lord be with you. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right, good, and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven. Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us. By the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother. and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arm and offered himself to a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to say, our 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Lord, Lord, Lord. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food, the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is in the hymnal at number 268. After a brief introduction, it begins, Ye who claim the faith of Jesus. I've been kind to our online folks by turning off the microphone while I sang that, because I've listened to the recordings the last few weeks and it's been painful. It's, uh, they say listening to your recorded voice is like a dog being made to eat its own vomit, except I own dogs. They love eating their own vomit. This is not a pleasant experience. So I apologize to those who've been with us. Um, I'm gonna try to make uh, the church small and make you big. Uh, if I'm able to do that here. There we are. John, are you able to unmute yourself? I think I have. You have, indeed. Please be seated, everyone. And I think, here, here you are. Here's everyone, John. If you can see, uh, on the, I'm on the celebrant camera. I can't see that, but that's oh, okay. I can, oh, see, oh. I, can see my, I, can, I can see myself in high definition. And quite you frankly... The, you must be on the... Try, go to gallery view on your phone, if you're on your phone. Oh, well, Just swipe, can, swipe or something like that. Let me see. Let me see what I can do here. Participants. Let me try this. No, that's not that's not working. What if you swipe to left or right? Yeah, no, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. 
participants share content. No, I'm not getting there. All right. Ah, well, I see that I'm on the church again. There, there. How about now? I see you. That's good. That's a good start. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. If I'm displayed in high definition glory uh, next week, I might even shave. Um, so, um, so, so, you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, uh, it, 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 this is this digital sort of presence is all new and all new and interesting. Well, it's pretty cool. And so, John, we're hoping uh, to entice you. Uh, you know, when when your company in Norwalk actually expects your physical presence, which I'm sure will be soon. Um, you better do, late sub, better, late better September. Quickly before it, better do it quickly before it, uh, but before there's a change in reality for them. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the company's doing extremely well during the pandemic, which is good news. Um, they they've reopened the office, but people Five minutes, are still. Sir. Have a good week. People are ahead, still John. working remotely. So um, I wish everyone a, a very pleasant Sunday, and thank you very much for uh, allowing me to participate. Thank you, John. Have a great week, and to those who may be hearing us. Uh, on Facebook later or YouTube. May your week be a, a blessed one as well. Oops.